please move to the to your yeah a little bit yeah good good it's good no no, no it's okay excellent perfect thank you hello everybody facebook audience Welcome everyone. Please go invite your friends. Boom, big Ben Row. Go invite the family. Go invite your friends. I want to see. Yeah, welcome. Go invite the team. Prosperous. Yes, welcome. Rebecca, welcome. J Jacob Essa, welcome. Tony, welcome. Luke man, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Oscar, Pures, I mean, is it Pius? Oh, yeah, welcome. Global, Global, welcome. Fonsani, welcome. Welcome and, uh, <laughs> and go invite your friends. I've got a very good friend here with me. She's my childhood friend when I was 19. I've been, uh, I've known this young lady. She's the most beautiful girl I'd ever seen till, till that time. That, I always call her the most beautiful girl of my, of my era. And, uh, but we lost relationship. We, we, we were flying from Nigeria. We left Nigeria the same day with this lady. She's now a lady. She's not my girl, but that time she used to be. But now she's, you know, so we left Nigeria the same day with this lady and, uh, and came to Russia together to study. And uh, uh, then we spent two weeks or one week together in the hotel, maybe one or two weeks together in the hotel. And then our paths, you know, they, you know, they separated us. I went to Belarus to study, uh, that is in, the, in Minsk. And then she went to Ukraine, by the way. <laughs> and I'm the one in Ukraine now. But she actually went to Ukraine. And I was not sent to Ukraine. Who, who would have known this? That I will now be the one in Ukraine. And uh, she is not going to be here. But she actually went to Ukraine. And, uh, and I went to Belarus, to Minsk. And for 30 years, we never saw each other. For 30 years, we never met again. So we just lost contact. And then somehow, somehow, but I never forgot her because I always remember that because she was one of the, the persons that really impacted me. I was a very shy, you must know this, that I was a very shy person in my, from my village, in Domila village, where we have only 40 houses, 40, <laughs> 40 huts. And, uh, and I was never exposed and I was never interactive like that especially i never saw people from other part of nigeria and i never was speaking english and i'd never traveled before and all kind of things like that so and i was alone i didn't know anybody but it was a big student all of us were on scholarship like maybe almost 200 people or so maybe but or maybe 100 but there were so many but you we were coming in bashes so i think that was the third bash we came in or second bash we were supposed to be 300 scholarship from Nigeria, so we came in the same flight. So, but I don't know how Shinwe noticed that this guy here is a kind of timid guy. He's timid. I was timid. <laughs> I didn't know how she noticed that I was a timid little boy there in the corner. And, you know, to me, she was looking glamorous in the sense that she was like an uh, eyebrow kind of girl. <laughs> High class eyebrow. <laughs> and I was not even <laughs> I was not even trying to greet her or to say anything to her because I knew that she was just too high for me. But she came down to my level. She came down to my level and uh, came to say, Oh hi, hello, what's your name? My name is Shinwe. And she was there doing that not for me, for everybody. She was, you know, interacting with everybody, you know, bringing life and jokes and, 
And even when we were in the plane, I couldn't eat some of the food. And, they, you know, she, I mean, she, she connected with people very well. And she was, she was not the only girl there, but she was the only girl everybody noticed. Oh, I, no one, no one, I, I don't even remember any of the girls there anymore at all. It was like she was the only girl. <laughs> all of that was about quickly forgotten. <laughs> because she was bringing so much life, so much energy. And so much, uh, you know, so much energy, so much life, so much. She was not forgetting everybody, anybody, not leaving anyone out. Uh, just caring, making sure that everybody was laughing, joking, you know, just lifting everybody up. Uh, you know, that was uh, that was my experience with with Shoma, I mean, with uh, Shinwe. Uh, and then in the hotel, and then they had to go. Uh, you know, they went to uh, Belarus, I mean, to Ukraine. I went to Belarus, and then that was it. We were all studying different profession. So that is the person we have here today. So you've heard our story, our story of nineteen years. I were nineteen year old people, <laughs> and just a little. What nineteen years? I'm looking at nineteen years now. Even my son is more than nineteen. That's very small. Small. We was very small. We were very small. But uh, I think she, she has to tell us how we reconnected. I've told you the story of the beginning. Maybe she will add to, add to her that. And then she will not tell you how we reconnected. But besides that, today is Shinwei's birthday. So I will, if you don't mind, uh, M, uh, the, you know, I want to say Ambassador of God, DSA family, if you don't mind, DSA family, please help me congratulate my shadow friend, uh, Shinwei. With a happy with a birthday today, so happy birthday, happy birthday to you. <laughs> it's a pity I couldn't give you a flower. You always have your birthday before before HMT before you pray, so there's no way for me to give you any flower or anything like that here. But uh, happy okay. happy birthday to you, the whole team. Everybody is joining, wishing you a happy. Happy Thank you, everyone. Birthday. Thank you, everyone. Now it's your time. It's your time, Shinwei. So this is the birthday girl's time. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Sunday. Thank you so much. <laughs> what can I say? You just said everything. And I just think that this is one of the best presents I could actually have. Because um, I know last year was my big year, but because of my health, I couldn't celebrate it. And I couldn't come to yours. So I think this opportunity now is a time to really, should I say, give up myself, you know, to people. And um, you just chose the right time, just the right time to do this. Anyway, um, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for celebrating me. I very much appreciate you guys. And um, I just want to say thank you to DSA for giving me the opportunity to be here today. In fact, I don't know. I wouldn't say I'm blessed. I'm just over, overwhelmed by everything. I'm not prepared by this, actually. I'm not prepared for this, but um, I'm happy to do it. I'm just going to rant, you know, go or do whatever that it takes, you yes, know. Just, as long just as keep on ranting. Just keep on ranting. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is me. Um, my name is Chiwe, just like um, DSA had said already. And um, the story DSA said, I'm not going to go back to it. That's exactly how it was. However, I left... Um, Maybe you want to add Soviet something to it, because it's good I'm, It's good to add to it. They would like to hear your own side of it as well. My own version. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'll go back to it. All right. Let me tell you guys what happened. We were going to Soviet Union. So at the airport, of course, with a lot of us there. And... Um, me being who I am, I just was connecting with people. Hello, are you going? Okay, I'm going. So what are you going to study? And all those stuff, you know. Then um, that was how actually me and DSA became friends. But something significant happened, and which is something I later found out sometime um, last year. I never knew that because I was just being myself. This is who I am. So um, I observed um, DSA at the time sitting down in the corner, you know, not with other students, because usually when students come, you know, we want to be together, you know, like a colony, stay together, you know, support each other. But he's always sitting on his own. And I, I said to myself, why is this guy sitting on his own? He doesn't want to join us. I told one of the guys to, why don't you get him to come? So, ah, we've spoken to him. He's like, he's just, that's him. I said, okay. 
But I said, okay. Wow. So you were quite. Why are you sitting here? Why don't you come and sit with us? Hmm. And he said, no, I'm okay. I just wanted. That was when I knew he was shy. I said, okay, if you don't want to join us, I'm going to join you. So I took my tray and I went and sat with him. So he said to me, so, you know, what are you going to study? I said, I'm also going to study journalism. And he said, you know, I'm born again. Are you born again? I said, oh, please, please, don't start with born again now. I've got my relationship with God. I don't want to talk about being born again and not being born again. Well, at the time, I wasn't born again anyway. Yeah, I was just like, going to church like, like any other person. It, it was like, yeah. it was a strange so concept. He said though. to me, oh, he got born again. <laughs> and I said... I don't want to talk about being born again now. Please just leave me. I'm here to study and live my life, you know, have fun. And that's what it is. So we laughed about all these things. And um, I think that was how me and DSA hooked up, you know, because um, one thing I've come to realize in my own life is that I observe people who are a bit quiet or not very sociable. Somehow I'm attracted to them. I want to know what's going on because I feel... God has created me to, you know, touch people, to make people smile, to make people laugh, you know, make them feel comfortable around me and anywhere else. And that's what I do. I do it not purposely because I want somebody to cheer me, because that's what's in me. It is that that's what God has, in fact, put in me. So that's who I am. So that was how my journey with DSA started. Then after I think about five or six days, he was sent to Minsk, to Belarus. And I was sent to Ukraine and I never saw him again. Never. So when I finished my studies, by the way, I didn't do journalism. I had to change because of the language. I said, no, this is too much for me. I mean, I left. And when I came to UK, one day I was just um, watching the Revelation TV. And I saw, I saw Sunday. I said, ah. I called my kids. I said, come, come, come. That guy is my friend, you know. We schooled together. We went to Russia together. And they started laughing at me. I said, mom, you know everybody. Everybody is your friend. I said, yes, everybody is my friend. But I mean, this guy, his name is Sunday. And they were listening. I said, oh, okay. Even my husband was like, hmm, okay. But you know, the African mentality. Once you have a friend that you are maybe on the same level or something like that, and the other person happens to, you know, um, should I say grow over, like in status, either financially or anywhere, people begin to feel very, um, should I say, withdrawn. They don't want to go too close. And that mentality was in me, I must tell you. I said, this one, I don't, I wouldn't even bother contacting him because if I do, they might start saying, oh, is it because I'm a pastor? Is it because you've known me now that I'm this and that? But then I kept quiet. I didn't, I didn't do anything about it. So thanks to Mark Zuckerberg, <laughs> who started the Facebook and people started linking up. So one day, I got this message from DSA, trying to find out who I, I was so surprised that he remembered the details of everything we discussed, everything that happened with that short space of time. I said, oh my God, this guy remembered me? Okay, so I just responded to him. I said, yeah, I just got him. Yes, Sonny, that's me. You know, it was like, because do you remember me? Because the, do you last, see me? because the last name was changed. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I said, yes, of course, I remember you. How can I forget somebody that I spoke with, we chatted, and, you know, we kind of had discussion down. I'm not like that. So he said to me, well, I told you I was um, born again. Now I'm pastoring a church. You know, he just told me briefly what's going on. I said, okay. It's good to hear from you. I was a bit skeptic, and you know? I said, well, I don't know what this guy wants now. <laughs> Let me just cool down. So after that discussion, he called me again another time, or I called him. You know, we started interacting. That was 2014, but to be honest with you, I didn't bother. I was still, you know, in that mood of, nah, this guy, I don't know. Should I? Should I? Not? <laughs> I told my husband, I said, well, if he's your friend and he has contacted, it means that he remembers you and, you know, really wants to keep in touch. So why don't you, you know, communicate? I said, okay, I'll do that. So I hooked up with Pastor Sunday. Then I knew the line, certain things were going on in my life. And to be honest with you, I said, because he's a pastor, I'm sure he's going to counsel me. Let me talk to him. One thing about me is that I don't hide my feelings. And um, I really don't care what people say afterwards. As long as I get my response, what I need to help me move on, and that's what it is. So I called him. 
And I said to him, look, this is the situation I have right now. I'm a bit disturbed about this. He spoke to me and he said to me, you go to my blog. Go and search for so, 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 and so, you know, just give me a few things to go and, you know, look at. Then if I have opportunity that he is doing the program, you know, this, um, the morning programs, I think it's 7.30 or so in the morning and the evening, then he started that. I should just join in. I said, okay. So during that period, because of the kind of work I do and when I leave home, in the morning I'll be listening from the car until I get to work. Then during handover, I have to put it off, but I always share it so that I can come back to it. So when I started listening to him, I said to myself, hmm, this guy has really gone haywire. He is no longer the Sunday that I know. This one has gone past my level. I know Fito. <laughs> but <laughs> the one who is talking, he said to me, why don't you, you know, get some of my books and read? I said to him, look, I'm dyslexic. I really don't like reading. I don't read, but I can listen. I'm a very vocal person. I like to listen. So he said, yeah, go ahead and listen to it. You know, whatever you can do. I wasn't very consistent, but um, ah. When he started the crisis um, series, I was off and not on. And that was a period I realized that, you know what, what this guy is saying to me is actually having an impact. Because there are certain things that when I see, you know, a situation, I wouldn't know what to do. You know, I get confused because my mind has been set in a particular way. And I tell you how, being a Christian there are things that the pastors has taught us, that our parents has taught us, the society has taught us, and that is in me. Even though I'm trying, some, I'm a very stubborn, well, I was a very stubborn person. If I don't agree with you, I don't agree. You can say what you like, and that's what it is. But, you know, with time, I get this maturity and, you know, having a husband and children, I have to learn to, you know, calm down, you know, do things with them, you know, listen to them and all those, you know, little bits. So when I started listening to those series, something began to happen in my life, you know, changes. The way I think, the way I do things, I start considering things. I really don't read the Bible. Honestly, I'm one of those victims that um, the pastor will tell you whatever he say. Yes, I mean, yes, praise the Lord. That's what it is. The way I go on with it, you know, and I don't bother to go and check. I don't even understand it. All I know is that all these Bible stories is a story to me. It doesn't mean much than stories. So... I just got on with my life that way. Even when I was in Russia, I was just be busy doing whatever I was doing. But, you know, um, my mother wasn't there. My father wasn't there. I was more or less bringing myself up. You know, you know, there is a stage in your life. You really need guidance. And I tell you something. Even before I left, I have been in the boarding school, you know, right from primary three, because my mom was very sick for a very long time. And that issue was actually what brought my family into this, um, should I say, a Pentecostal issue, you know, problems. I call it problems because it affected my family. When I mean my family, not just my, my dad and my mom, but also the, my uncles, my aunts, my grandmother, you know, everybody was involved. It's like you now begin to feel isolated. And I didn't like what I was seeing. So I just said, well, they're my parents. There's something I can do. I just have to get on with things. They, I found out that the family unity was really in a big, I don't know, there's a big dilemma there because I don't know which one to do, what to do, you know, how do I go? Well, how do I deal with these things? But I couldn't do anything. All I did was I wrote a letter to one of my uncles or my cousins, right? Now, you know, a bigger cousin. I said, look, uncle, then he was an investor. I said, I don't like what's going on in this family, you know. Can we put things together so that everybody come back, you know? And, you know, it's, it's very difficult for me to do anything at that time as a child. And being the first daughter of my father, my father was the first son. They had only two boys and then ladies. To be honest with you, I was like a princess because it took them time for them to have a child. So when I came, I was like, ooh, everybody's favorite. But when this issue of church and all these prophecies started coming, a lot of things changed. It affected the relationship so much. It put so much strain. And I tell you something, but, I observe that but the, the only thing, time... The same thing is still going on in to many families today. Yes. 
It is true. And you know, for me, I looked at it, I said, if these older ones cannot put things right, is it me that will put it? That was the only thing I said. That I so I moved on. And the only thing I did was, I started avoiding certain cousins, avoiding if my parents are not in very good relationship with maybe their mom or dad or whoever, I have to avoid going there because they will tell you, you know, these people and their enemies don't go there, this and that, you know, and all these things, man, it's just, it's crazy. But God saved me. And that savior was taking me out of Nigeria at that age. I went to Russia believing that there are certain things they do back home that will stop me from progressing, that will not allow me to get anything, that will not allow me to do this. But you know what? When I went to Russia for six years, I never went to church. I went to a place where there is no God. They didn't believe there is God. Yet my life was okay. What? Nobody was chasing me. <laughs> I remember we would go to the parties on our way coming back, you know, you know how the cemeteries here are. We just sit down by uh, somebody's tomb and, you know, drink and eat and off we go. And nobody chases me. Nobody was chasing me. Meanwhile, the idea I had in Nigeria is that if you cross a place where somebody died, they will, even, they will give you stroke. In fact, they will catch you, whatever, you know. Those are the information that they've been giving us. And this is exactly what messed up my mind and some other people's mind. But thank God it didn't lead to a psychiatric problem because that is enough. The fear is enough to lead to a psychiatric problem. But I thank God that the personality he gave me gave me the ability to just shine, you know, go out, do my thing, carelessly do whatever I like. It might not be good, but at the time it was a helpful behavior. It made me not to stick to all those beliefs, you know. The end. Then when I came here and I met DSA and I started listening to everything that he was saying, I began to now reason. I said, ah, but if they taught us this thing this way and said it that way, how come he's saying it this way now? Then that's when I started thinking. I said, ah, okay, there must be something I don't understand. Then the particular one that blew me away was when DSA now taught about critical thinking. Oh my God. I said, yes, we never think. We just do things at random, whatever we like, whatever, we, because we think, oh, people will say this. And I tell you something, I will have to repeat it. It's because of what they would say, what family will say, what, you know, society will say that made me have four children. That is the reason. Because I had three girls first. They're all cesarean. And I'm putting myself at risk to have a boy so that I will have a place in the society. What the hell is that? But you know what? It's an experience. But I thank God I'm able to discover the essay and his teaching at this time. At least I am passing on information to my children and to people around me, not to think about certain things. Now I'm a full time, I'm not going to say I'm, a, I'm not a preacher, but I am kicking against so many things, at least with my mouth. You know, I'm telling people, no, no, it's not right. Don't think about it that way. And you know what? It has also enabled me to calm down, you know, begin to um, be more temperamental, you know, in my own way than the way I used to be. I'm somebody that is very, very sensitive. And when you do something, I will react. I have always had this belief that when you do something to me, I'm going to show you that you can have double, double fold of it. That was who I was. I was very friendly, but... I can be mean. When I mean mean, if I say it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen. But now, oh my God, when things go wrong, I'll just sit back and try to understand where the person is coming from, how he or she is saying it. I'll try and reason with that person. Then I can come and say, okay, I get where you're coming from, but can we look at it from this angle? You know, I began to use negotiation skills in everything I do right now. You know, and that is one of the things I tell you that listening to DSA has done in my life. And um, when it comes to church, I stopped, I went to HMT um, in November 2016 because I started listening to pastors and um, teachings, I think, in August. But you know what? <laughs> when I went to the HMT, I didn't go to the HMT to learn anything. If I must be truthful to you, I didn't go to learn anything. I went there to be sure that this is 
the Sunday that I know. Is this this guy or somebody else? Let me see if it's him. So when I go there, I was just looking at him. I was just following him, but people didn't understand, you know, my mindset. And I, but I was, you know, listening to everything, but I wasn't even taking in anything. All the information was like, oh God, this man, talk with me, make you, make you go, you know, I want to make sure that this is you, you know? And um, honestly, I'm glad I went because um, it opened my eyes to certain things. Then when I came back, I became more confused. <laughs> I became more confused because the things I had, the way you taught it, I said, God, this is too much. I really can't handle this for now. It took me time. People were like, oh, when you just started, I said, you push, leave me. Me and you, we are all different people. Just leave me. Let me do my own thing. And I said to the say, don't worry. I'm taking my time. But I want to take my time to discover who I am because I don't know who I am. I never knew. But you see, now... I've come to understand why God created me. I'm a peacemaker. I'm just a peacemaker. All I need is actually the quality, the knowledge to bring peace to my environment. Because anywhere there is an issue now, when I set in, I don't know, I have this leadership role everywhere, at work, anywhere. Once there's anything, oh my God, I try not to make judgment, but I point out things so that people will understand where they didn't do it very well and if possible give them an alternative if i can you know that is one of the things i have learned and it has changed my life my family can attest to that my friends can attest to that but it didn't stop me from joking i do my jokes i do my jokes as as much as i can but i don't do it to offend anybody i'm more careful now what i say to people and I, and you know what as the sunday you won't believe it that since 2016 that I came back from HMT, I've not watched TV. I canceled my TV license. Now I can pick up a book and read. Even if I read it for one month, it doesn't matter. The fact is that I'm making that effort. And for me, it's a great testimony. It is a great testimony. I'm getting so much knowledge from what is happening. It's going to take me time to shift in certain things, but it's happening. It is happening. And I tell you something. Last year, I think I did mention it to you. Why all these things were going on? I started asking myself, what can I do to help my environment? What can I do to help people? And, you know, I've always had something in mind growing up. I, I, I love people who are orphans. I love them. Not just orphans, but people who have been mistreated in the environment. I remember one or two occasions. I tried to fight somebody for that reason. Even when we were in school in Russia, a friend of mine beat up, you know, when I mean beat up, beat up her girlfriend and pulled her hair. I had to fight him. And, you know, oh, it's good to have, you know, some changes in your life. So that happened, and I said to myself, no, things have got to change. I cannot be a man and be a woman. They used to call me tomboy because of the way I do things. But, you know, <laughs> that's me, that's who I am, but um, life goes on. So, you know, I now began to think of what I can do because what DSA taught me, it taught everybody, but what I took out from what he taught was don't wait to have so much to impact people. Start with the nearest little thing you can do. And I said, okay, I never thought about that because I wasn't a thinking person. I never thought it. I was waiting for when I would become a billionaire, then I can do this and that. But you know what? Last year, I started this thing. And what I did was to touch certain families that I knew were struggling with the little I have. Like I said, I've not been going to church. I've been paying tight. I've been paying my tight. Yet things were going wrong in my life. And they keep telling me, you know, your faith, maybe I don't have enough faith. Maybe their own faith will work for me. But anyway... <laughs> Thank God for everything. Now I have my own faith because um, my understanding of prayer now is such that I know my father is with me everywhere I go and I have to be conscious of whatever I do. Now I'm saying to myself, whatever I do, I ask myself, what would Christ say about this? What would he do if he was to be here? So I'm consciously asking myself the question, is this thing I'm doing, is it right? 
Is it the right thing to do? If it's not the right thing, then don't do it. And I've always had this slogan growing up, do unto people what you would like them do unto you. So if I don't want you to do certain things to me, why should I do it to you? Why? So this is who I am. And this is what I have become. DSA, I don't know. Um, I love the truth. And um, I'm always yearning for the truth, even before now. But you know, when society or environment tells you something different and portrays it as truth, because you don't have that confidence, you know, you accept it and move on. Even though you'll be feeling bitter or, you know, not very happy about it, you just accept it. But now, I am so bold. I am so bold to actually confront anything that I think, from family to friendship, that I think is not right. But you know what? I'm doing it in a very subtle way, in a very respectful manner. Not because I want to show you I know better than you or you're better. No, it's because I want you to understand where I'm standing. And I also want you to understand that where you are or what you are thinking might not actually be right. Can we look at it from a different perspective? And that is the same critical thinking you've taught me. And thankfully, I did nothing. I did mental health nothing. So that knowledge of nothing, not being judgmental, accepting people for who they are, was now reinforced in me. It's there, but it was reinforced. Then you coming now to teach about these things called love. Oh my God. You need to move I to the right, you. move to your right and let it, let your head go up. Yes, and let your yeah. head, yes, good. Good, good. Is it better? Yes, it's better. Thank you. All right. So, you know, when you talked about the love series, I said, oh, my God, there is so much to learn. There is so much. And I tell you, DSA, all of us that is in this platform or anywhere can never have enough. We can never have enough because there's always something new. You know, sometimes I wonder, how are you going to do a series for one month, two months? And I'm asking myself, are you not going to be repeating yourself? What is he going to say this time? But by the time you listen, you find out there is so much that you haven't even touched. You know, so I just have to scoop what I can, you know, use it, do what I can do. I might not get all the information, but the ones I'm getting, I'm using it. And it's productive. It is productive. So um, what can I say? Um, I've managed to make some links. I don't have an NGO. I'm planning to create one and I'm making contact with people. But in the time being or in the interim, I am connecting with people who are doing certain things that I know I'm interested in, okay? And um, when I went home last month... Even, even before you went home, you started doing yes. some things. Can yes. you tell us more yes. about that? Even before, because there are some people okay. who are abroad, and they are thinking yes. because they are abroad, they cannot mm. do anything. But I like the strategy that God gave you, the way you started yes. to take it. And also, people who think that they are not millionaires... And they cannot do something. So I, you know, all the, the way God used you. Even when I went to pray, and God spoke to me that I should tell everybody to go and use the New Year and Christmas and do certain things. But you are already doing it because that means God has spoken to you. So because if you share that experience, many of us can begin to do the same thing. Mm. Okay, um, let me just explain. You know, last December, like I said, I was going through certain crises health-wise, okay, and it affected my finances as well, coupled with the fact that my husband wasn't around to support me, you know, he was, you know, outside the country. So it was quite, you know, a challenge for me. So I started praying with all I heard from you, you know, all the teachings. I said, God, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this thing? Now, when I was praying, you know, the thought, I believe is the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, look, even when you don't have and you are willing to do, something will happen and that's miracle. That's what I call miracle. So I tell you something, a lady that I've been speaking to and helping to do certain things, who is in Scotland in the past five years, I've not met her to today. Hmm. She called me. And she said, Chiwe, I said, yes, auntie. She said to me, I've paid some money into your account. I thought she was going to ask me to, you know, send it to her family back home because I helped her to do that. She said, no, it's for you to use for this Christmas. Okay. I just want to 
say thank you for all you're doing. I said, oh, my God. In fact, I started crying. I felt so bad because I knew I was in financial stress. Okay? So what did I do? I said, Lord, this is it. You have made provision available. And because I asked you and you said there will be availability, I'm going to use this money to bless people. So I made contact in two different regions, contacted my sister, contacted my husband. I said, go and gather all the widows in the place, in my husband's place. I don't know them. I've not met them. Find out how many there are. He gave me the information. I sent some money. I said, buy, you know, bag of rice, you know, some items for the Christmas. And please bless them. Tell them that this is from your wife. And that is what God has put in my heart to do. I didn't buy anything from my family here, you know. I didn't buy anything for my children. I told them and they understood what was going on. They supported me. Then I told my sister in Lagos, I said, I dare people, when I said to my sister, I said, this is what God put in my heart to do. Can you please help me check for people within, around you, whether it's in church or in your street, anywhere, that are requiring some kind of help, that this is what I want to do. My sister said to me, oh my God, sister, you know what? I was praying that I wish I could have some money. There are one or two people I wanted to help myself. That's my sister telling me. But now God has used you. I said, we are doing the same thing. So it's fine. So she went and got these people, bought the same thing I told my husband to buy. The little you get, you know, every family got something that they could cook and eat for that Christmas period. Now, two or three of them, Called when she went to give um, the items to them, they said they would like to speak to me. Who is this person? I said, Well, I can speak with them, it's fine, but I don't need to speak to them. But if they want to, that's fine. So, what they did was put a call across on WhatsApp. One of the ladies prayed for me, thanked me, said, Look, I don't know who you are, but what God has put in your heart to do, and you have obeyed and done it. Is benefiting me, and I want to thank God for your life. I want to do this, and I said, Thank you, mom. It's okay, not to worry. Then the second person came and started praying the typical Nigerian prayer God will bless you. This would that anybody who said you will not benefit, who will say you will not see tomorrow, <laughs> God, don't go fly. I said, No, I just stopped her and I said, Madam, I beg no vests, I don't pray such prayer. He said, No, God, these people. You look at what you are doing for us. You don't even know me and blessing. I said, yes, because that's what Christ said we should do. Okay? What you have, you bless. So she said, you know, she kind of paused and well, what kind of Nigerian is this? This is how we pray. I said to her, there is something I've learned. You know that when you pray for prayer, you are actually killing somebody. Are you a murderer? She said, no. I said, good. You don't want to murder with your mouth. So I kind of extracted the knowledge, what DSA has taught. And I said, I used it. I say, you know, the more you pray for people to, you know, change their heart, for God to bless them, maybe there will be changes. So treat them nicely. You know, when they're treating you badly, treat them nicely. Don't, don't, don't play, pray such prayer because it's not going to really work. Let me tell you, it's not going to work. So after counseling her, she said to me, Auntie, Thank you so much. I've learned something new today. And to me, that's evangelism. I've done it. So I don't need to go to church to do that. So that's it. So that was what happened. So um, after that, I think um, in January, um, my sister spotted another family that the little girl is about two or three. The brothers go to school, but she doesn't go. And... Um, she went to drop the brothers and started crying, wanting to stay in the school. And um, the mother said, well, we can't cope. There are other children. So when she told me, I said, okay, you know what? Get the detail of the school. How much are they paying? I will take care of that. I promise I'm going to be doing that for that particular girl. I just want to take that and bless her. And that was what I did. It's not much. It's not much, but... The little it is, I'm telling you, is doing a lot. It's, it's great. People are happy. And I feel good. I feel happy. Now I know that I'm a Christian. Because before now, 
I was just a religious Christian going to church, doing all these things, you know, trying to pray in tongues, even when I don't know how to pray, I force myself to, okay, it's not coming, what can I do? You know, just for me, it was just pretense, you know. But um, now I can pray peacefully. I'll wake up and say, thank you, Lord, for today. I don't know what you planned for me, but let your will be done. Give me the, the wisdom to deal with whatever comes my way. And that's all I need. Thank you, Lord. And I go. But before now, for me to travel, hey, we have to get pastor to pray for you. Make sure it's a safe trip. You understand? Uh huh. Then you go to your cousin's house. They give you food. You'll be saying, ah, mm, I'm not hungry. Maybe you're hungry, but you're just hiding it so that nobody poisons you. That's the mentality. Okay? And again, having said that, I did something else. I did something else. Maybe I shouldn't be saying this you here, should. but I have you to have say to. it. You have to say yes. it. Yes, I have to say it. Um, I schooled in the girls' school, okay? And um, the school at the moment is very dilapidated or dilapidated. I don't know what they call it. But um, I had a very senior, very senior sister who is in America who started like alumni group, global alumni group. Most of them, we don't know. Some of them are even our school mother. Some of them had left school before we started. So I saw that the communication wasn't flowing very well between the junior ones, us, and the most senior ones. We are maybe about 60, 70. We didn't meet them. So I decided to coin out another group from that group to actually be among ourselves, you know, those you schooled with, maybe your school mothers and the ones after you, that you can interact quickly and briefly. We can make the jokes and do the things we used to do in school. So I started that, and um, I told them that um, the aim of that, because it's the ideology I got from Pastor Steen, because like I said, I don't have to have an NGO, but I brought them together. We had the WhatsApp group. We discussed what we need to do for our school to help with the education and everything. So we decided to help build the school back, doing certain things. So we did certain things, you know, um, bought them some chairs and things like that. And um, we are planning a reunion, which actually, um, by God's grace in October, if God permits, I will be there so that we can help the school. It's a community school. They said it's a church school. The Methodists, they're not doing anything about it. You know, the students don't have any place to sit. I mean, it's, it's I, I wouldn't say Nigeria, but the school was just in a state of, um, sorry, you know. So the old students are now trying to organize. For me, I see that also as a charity work. You know, it's, 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 it's doing good. So any area, we can do whatever we can do to make sure that people around us, our community, are living a better life, going to school, doing what they need to do. Oh, for God's sake, what else do we want? Do I have to die and go to heaven to tell that, that you know, this is how it is? No, we need to create the heaven here. We need to create it, making people's life worth living. So for me, I thought... I've learned something coming to the next HMT, which was um, this November 2017. To become a personality is actually sacrificing yourself, giving yourself all you have to the world, to people around you. Not thinking about yourself all the time. Because Beautiful. we think about ourselves. Beautiful. My family, Beautiful. my children, all this. And I told my, my children, I said to them, listen, guys, I love you guys. I told my sister, I love you guys. We but love you know what? We love you too. <laughs> what a surprise! Where are your girls? You come on, come on! Hello! <laughs> what a pleasant surprise! Wow! Those are the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Wow. What a surprise! No, show them, let them say hi to us now. We have two hundred people here. Yeah, yeah. We have two hundred people yeah, congratulating mommy today. Um, <laughs> Hi guys. Hello, Hello Nation. <laughs> Come happy Hello, birthday. Sunday. Happy birthday to all of you. Come 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 come, come to the yeah. So that we see you you we, we see your sister as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Beautiful girls, beautiful okay, girls. Okay, that's Kelechi there. Yeah. Yes. That's the first one, Kelechi. Hi, Kelechi. And that's I don't think they can see me. We can, they see, can see. We, we only see Kelechi. We are not seeing. We see Kelechi. 
Where is the Where is the sister? Here. Okay. What's your name? Vivian. Vivian. Okay. Now, thank you so very much for not giving your mom too much headache and for <laughs> understanding her and <laughs> for making her for making her look so still young as well. And uh, uh, she's so no problem. ever so Always. ever so beautiful, and for not <laughs> making her to become like your grandma, but you are bringing her down to your to your <laughs> stage, so she's looking more like your sisters now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Sunday. Yeah, so happy birthday mm. to all of you, to your whole family, and uh, Thank you. The, the, we have people from like maybe hundred countries right now online. I mean, it's greeting and saying, uh, um, you know, happy birthday to your mom. So your mom is a hero. <laughs> She's a popular, popular lady right here. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. She's an empress. She is yes. a queen. And we thank God for her life. We thank God for you too, Pastor. Honestly, thank, thank you, you for your words of wisdom. For changing her. For impacting her life who has impacted no, us. No, now well, I would like you to really speak one by one. I would like you to speak one by one. Let's start with Kaleshi. So that we'll see okay. your face. Kaleche, you say. Yes. What will you say? What will you say about yes. your? What will you say about the transformation that you have seen in your mom? What will you say about mom? Move to the right a little bit. Yeah. To the right. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Okay. That's right. Um. Yeah. Okay. So for my mom, one thing I would say, and I've said it before, um, on Mother's Day, I see Christ in my mom on a daily basis, and I've seen the transformation in terms of how she um eludes peace how she eludes joy. Um, and I know that she's someone that is very influential. Um, my mom is someone that has seen things about my future even before I have. She's believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. So she reminds me a lot about a, a lot of, about Christ. There's a lot of qualities about her that I, I, I think of Christ when I think of her. So I'm really grateful for her. And also as well, just the amount of love she shows. I know that I was troubled. Before, I had, I know I can be a handful sometimes, but the way my mom shows me love, it just makes me want to make her even proud, and I can't wait to do that, and I hope that I have been doing that slowly, well, slowly, well, small, well, small. Well. But yeah, I even came down from uni today to surprise her. We got her a cake, and we're got just... Got roses. Yeah, and we're just going to spend some time with her, but yeah, we're really grateful for her. Like, I don't know where I'd be without my mom, but I thank God, um... And thank you, Pastor Sunday, as well, because, yeah, she does not stop talking about you at all. DSA, DSA, all the time, DSA, DSA. Yeah, come to Ukraine, come to Ukraine. I will come, sir. Don't worry, I will come. <laughs> but I'm really grateful. <laughs> thank you so much. What will you say, Kalechi, what will you say to all the friends of your mom all over the world? You don't know all of them yet, but what will you say to them? They are all rejoicing and congratulating her right now. Um, for those that are her friends and those that want to be her friend, she's a gem. It's, diamonds are very hard to find. They're very rare. But when you find them, you, you, you hold on to them because, again, like I said, you can't find them just anywhere. That's what my mum is. Um, my mum is someone that, from what I've seen, anyone she's come in contact with, she's had impact on. Yes. So for me, yes. it's like, if you're going to be her friend, I would like to think that you are benefiting from the friendship as well. Mm. It's two-way. But I'd like to also think that even if it was one way, she's still blessing you. She deposits something wherever she goes. So if you want to be uh, blessed and if you want to see the glory of God even more, become her friend you know, that <laughs> if is, you're not already. That is, yeah. how, that is how we hooked up because I was a very timid young man, very shy, just sitting in a corner yeah. until this bright, brilliant, beautiful Fiery lady came and got me. Uh, and <laughs> yeah. So, mom, is that true? You were harassing people. <laughs> in no. She no. got she me. She now. She got me out of the. Mm. She got me out of depression. She got me out of lack of uh, mm. lack of interest. I mean, just just been lost. And she brought me to the team. And you know, yeah, that's mm. all, that's just who she is. <laughs> Well done, mommy. We're proud of you. Proud of you. Keep conquering the souls. More souls for the kingdom. <laughs> Where is Vivian? Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Kaleshi. Thank you, Pastor Sunday. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go.
All right. <laughs> Hello, Vivi. Hi. Yeah, hi. Very good. What will you say to your mom today or about your mom? Well, if I had to stay and like say something, I'll probably be here till um, the next Olympic, <laughs> which is probably in about four years. I'll probably be, write a book, plenty of novels. But um, one thing I will say is like, my mom has been my best friend, has been my mother, um, has been my guardian, has been like protector, has been everything. Like my older sister said, she's been um, like literally, I can see Christ in her like every day. From young, she's always motivated me, whatever you want to do. Sometimes I find it hard to juggle uni and um, work and she's like, keep going, you can do this. And she knows that I, I'm like her, like I don't start something and not finish it. I have to finish it by force. So she's like, you know, you've got this, you can do this. Always encouraging me, listening to like DSA sermons, what you want to do, do what you love, because that's how you're going to get the money that you need, invest, plan um, towards the future. And, you know, like obviously in, in January before my birthday, I set a goal last year and I said that I want to pass my driving. And by the grace of God, I did pass my driving and with her encouragement. And, you know, she's like, you can do this, you can do this. And I did it. And yeah, I'm just so happy because she's always like been at the back. Like, even if like I feel because I'm a type of person that I feel like I can always carry things and do things by myself. But she's always like reassured me saying that, like, like she always, even when you, I, I don't see her there, she's always there, like behind me. Um, so she's like my backbone. So obviously, with, in order for us to sit up and look straight ahead, you need your spot and help people support you she's my spine so um, your, like, and yeah like i'm just your, so happy to like, like your like your angel <laughs> like little angel behind you yeah she's like <laughs> my angel yeah so i'm just so happy like she's my mother and i thank god as well because obviously like if god if she would like if it wasn't for god she wouldn't have been my mother like she was chosen to be my mother so i'm so happy like she's been everything to me Beautiful, beautiful. So what will you say to people who are watching today? Uh, and, uh, you know, what we, people are greeting her from all over the world. What would you like to say anything to them? Um, I would like to, first of all, thank you, Pastor Sunday, because honestly, like, ever since she's come like back in touch with you again, and she's watching your sermons, she's just, it's just a different light around her, like, she's so much happier, so much motivated, so, like, so positive, um, even, like, obviously, you already know the situation that she's in, she's just always, like, you know, waking up happy, smiling, singing, doing what she needs to do, and, you know, I want to thank you, because Honestly, if it wasn't for the words, for your encouragement, for your advice, for your everything, she wouldn't be that person that she is today. Um, everyone around the world, I just want to thank you. Friends, people that don't know us, people that don't know her. Um, definitely get in touch with her. Drop a message, reach out. Because honestly, like, like my oldest sister said, anyone that she's come across that has honestly been blessed like in some type of way, like they've never left her presence, never spoken on the phone and left that phone call without something. So, um, yeah, like, honestly, like, reach out to her. She's humble. She's, like, got the advice. She's, you know, she she seeks God and God obviously helps her. Like, she'll just honestly pass on the knowledge, like, so she, and she's very warm as well. So, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Vivian. Thank you so very Thank much. You, Congratulations Pastor. to all of you. Now, we, you. now we will need your mom back. <laughs> we will need your mom back. Okay. <laughs> we need the birthday girl. Just, just for we need oh the birthday. God. Just for another, just for another fifteen minutes, we need the birthday girl. That then we we'll let you go to see your girls. But uh, you, you are yeah. We want you. We want you back because I still want you to tell the story of your visit to Nigeria and how God used you. You know, you know, to be to be a source of blessing. You know, in that area as well. But you are saying something. Yeah, um, I was saying that um, when I went to Nigeria. To be honest with you, it wasn't very much a planned trip, but eventually I went. And when I went, the school that my son was in, I spoke to the vice principal. Um, and I, you know, I kind of got into a conversation and I said to her that, you know, some of these children, I don't know how you punish children in school, you know, because some schools are still punishing kids. And I said to them, listen, 
do you know that some kids might be dyslexic, but they never knew. Parents don't know. Nobody is aware of that. I became dyslexic in this country. That's all I'm saying is that I only knew that I was dyslexic when I came to this country. Just in 2012, when I went to do my postgraduate studies, and I was struggling. I was struggling with my work. And a friend of mine from Zimbabwe, she said to me, Chichi, um, you know, you are very good in telling the stories, you know, good in explaining things. But when it comes to writing it, you know, constructively, you have an issue. Have you thought about going for dyslexic testing? I said, what's that again? <laughs> you know, I started laughing. I said, this lesson I wait in disability. I'm not disabled. What's wrong with you? I just said, no, 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 it's not like that. So she sat me down and explained to me and said, look, this is what it is. That is something that affects people. That doesn't mean you're disabled. It's just that they categorize it, you know, into some kind. I said, okay. But luckily, I went and I did that testing. And lo and behold, they said I was dyslexic. But it's you okay. Had, but Fine. it didn't become like that in the UK. It was always like that. No, that's what I'm saying. I became, because that's when I realized. That's okay. when I knew. Okay. Because even in school, maybe some of my secondary school mates might be on this platform. Even in school, I'm not that brilliant, like first, second position. You will see me between at least 10, 15, 20 even. I get by. That's the thing. So, and but in Russia, I didn't have much problems because... You know, we Lato do um, we don't verbal, do, we we don't do verbal do, exams. Yeah, we don't do writing exams writing. in Russia. Yes, we don't write. Yeah. So that condition was suitable for whatever it is that I was going through. So I didn't notice anything. You know, I was fine because I like to talk. So they want to hear you talk. So you, you, you just talk and that's it. So eventually, um, when I got here, I struggled a bit doing my BSc. But I went through, but it was a bit of a struggle. But I didn't pay attention to it. When I went back now to do the postgraduate, that's when I realized that something wasn't right. And I went through the process, found out what it was. I said, okay. So I began to, even my kids, I began to look at them. You know, you might be bright doing things and all this. And even Kelechi that just came here now, she just realized that she's dyslexic too, to some level. You know, there is a level to all these things. Some are minor, some are major. It's a psychological testing. So you need to, for me, you, need to you raise see your, me. Raise your phone, raise your something again, so your head. Okay, okay, good, good. Is it better? Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. So, you know, if you see me talking to you, doing my own thing, you, you, will, not, you will not believe dyslexia is anywhere near me. But, you know, for me, it doesn't limit me. The fact is that when I realized that this was the case, I became low, okay? I began to say, oh my God, is this what was happening? So I began to think about it. And I said to myself, I know if they know about this in Nigeria, they will say they don't do me something, you know, and I make me, a, 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 I don't function well. <laughs> deliverance. <laughs> they will call it you and do deliverance. <laughs> huh. Do you know the kind of deliverance they did for me in Nigeria? I went to deliverance, so they, I tired. When I get sick, deliverance, I'll be running in school sports because I used to dance, I used to be in the debating society, I used to be in everything, you know, activity. Once my leg gets sprained, oh, they don't come. You know, all those kind of things. So that was the life I lived and we believe that that's how it is. But well, fortunately and thankfully to God, he took me out of that country before they finished me. So when I went back now, I spoke to the lady. I, let me go back to my story of going to Nigeria. I spoke to the lady. We had a conversation, and I told her some of the symptoms of dyslexia. And I said to her, do you know that some of your students might be going through this? They don't understand. Their parents don't know. Every time they'll be knocking you on the head. Boom, you, are too, you know, you don't, you don't hear. You, you do this, you do You know, all those things. And this is I'm patting on these children's psychological health, you know? They will begin to hate school. They wouldn't want to even go to school. That's dyslexia is one of the reasons people leave school because when they don't um, have support, you know, to do, they are very intelligent and creative. But the thing is that the way their brain works is different from the way, you know, the so-called normal brain works. So they don't know about this. When I spoke to her, she said to me, you know what? I might be dyslexic myself because I struggled so much in school. I said, well, wow. I don't know. That is the end. She said to me, would you like to... Wow, the principal, said, the principal said that, eh? The vice principal, yeah. Wow. She said, um, why don't you come? She invited me, why don't you come and, um, you know, give a little talk, you know, about this. 
at least to the teachers and parents, you know. So I said, okay, I will try. But certain things happened. I couldn't go to that particular school. But now in Lagos, I was able to go to another school. It's a private school, primary and secondary school. They were having their parents' teachers um, meeting. So I took advantage of that. And I went there. When I spoke, spoke to the proprietress, she said to me, well, why not come? Because I said, it would be nice to talk about a little bit of this dyslexia and also bring value, some value system in, all around the way they treat children. So she gave me the opportunity and uh, I went there. You know, I had a little talk. They did their meeting and I told them about dyslexia. I told them about myself because one thing I've come to realize now, before now, I will not admit based on the church and the Pentecostal system of, um, should I say, Christianity, yeah. I will not accept anything. I will say, it's not my portion. No, ah. this will not happen to me. But now I've come to realize that <laughs> when you accept certain things that is happening, it's evident, it's there. What do you need to do? You now look for ways of dealing with it. There is a solution. So begin to look for solution. And once you get it sorted, that is gone. It's finished. You know, so I am coping with it. Even with my health, I'm not very well, but I've resumed work. I didn't go to work from January to September last year. When I came to HMT in November, you people saw me. I was almost, you know, bending over. But you know what? I said, Lord, even in this situation, you can still use me. And I tell you, I decided to forget what was going on with me and face other things. So the pain come and go. I can't be bothered with it. I just carry on. Any day it gets too much, I take time off and relax. So this is how I've been living my life. So when I went to Nigeria, I went and gave a little talk. And um, they did appreciate it. And some of the teachers said to me, you know what? You should come again because um, this is a small talk. Because we are doing PTA. And maybe next time you come, we'll have a proper you know, meeting. We'll get some, pro uh, what's it called, projector. And you know, I said, okay, whatever, anytime. So that was the little thing I've done. But you see, before now, I wouldn't have thought about that. I wouldn't have even but that I would say I was my own. But you see, I thank God that um, what you've taught or what you are teaching is yielding results. You understand? It's yielding results. So anywhere I go and I know there's something I can do, I'll go ahead and do it. What about starting, okay. what about starting a whole movement in Nigeria to enlighten and open the eyes of people to this issue of dyslexia? Because I had a, an issue myself. Maybe it's dyslexia too. Maybe no, I don't know what. But I couldn't yeah. read till I was ten, and they were always beating me, beating me, and all that. So, what what about starting a whole movement later on? Maybe when we go to Nigeria or so, we'll start a whole I movement. Have, I am. I am. The schools. I actually, I have spoken to, I have made, um, what's it called? I've made an inquiry, you know, and uh, I did contact um, Dr. Um, Victor, you know, Bamiche. I contacted him and um, we talked about it briefly. And um, because I think there is somebody he knows in Nigeria who happened to have contacted me as well. We spoke about one or two things. And I said to them that it's something to, you know, to work on. I mean, one of the things, you know, we do is um, follow the process you've taught us, which is having a plan in our head, okay? It's not about the money. Now, having a plan in our head, how is it going to work? Putting a system in place, which for me, I might not know how to build the system for now, which is one of the things that, you know, puts me off in doing certain things. But if I'm able to, you know, um, how is it? Um, partner with somebody who knows, then it can come like a team, and that will be enough, you know, to start something. I, I said to my friends in school, you know, that every little help. But the thing is that we need to start changing our mindset, the way we see things, because this thing called religious beliefs has played so much part in our lives that we are so scared to even take a step. You know, we are not honest, Nigerians. We are generally not honest. But it's good to start somewhere. I believe that if one person or two people can start something that can be seen, others will join. And um, I am working on that. That is what I can say for now regarding the movement of um, this lesson. Because so many people don't know about it at all. So it's something some people know, some people don't know. No, but what so you said is that us. even the vice principal didn't know. Yeah. She didn't know. Of a school, of the, she's the one in charge of the children, and she didn't even yes. know. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Yeah. So that is that is it. What would you like to say uh, on this your birthday? What would you like to uh, reflecting on the changes that have taken place in your life over the past uh, mm. few one two years? What would you like to say to the, the people who are watching who just came in, your friends and people who are watching today? Okay. Okay. Um, friends, family, well, I would like to say it's Nakomi in yes. Russia, yes. you know, acquaintances, whoever, everybody that is watching. What I want to say today is that I want to glorify God for my life. It has been a journey. It's a journey for me. And um, it might be slow because, yeah, some people say it's so slow. People do things differently. And one thing I want to do is that whatever I want to do, I want to do it real good so that when I turn around, I say, yes, I did it. So I'm not in a hurry to do certain things, but I am working on this thing. And today, I want to thank DSA. I want to thank Dr. Sunday because um, today, I think, is the best day for me to have come on this platform to express myself because... I see it as a bad gift for myself and to people around me, including you all, for you to hear my story, to hear what has happened. I'm not, um, what's it called? I, I'm, I don't know. I'm not a celebrity, but I'm also a celebrity in a way. Why? Because I'm celebrating myself. Okay. And if I come around you, definitely you will know that there's a difference in my life. And for those who has no, those who have known me for a very long time, they could see the difference in the way I do things or the way I talk. Well, I talk and make jokes. That aspect is still there. But now I'm very, very peculiar with the things I say and how I say it because I've come to understand that love is the only thing that conquers everything. And I'm very, very skeptic. When people tell me, oh, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't have done this, I'll say, no, forget it. It doesn't matter. I do things now based on what God has put in my heart. And when I reflect and see that what I'm doing is not sensitive to anybody's um, feeling, but rather um, it is in, in, in line with what God wants me to do then I am not bothered. I will go to sleep without minding. We all make mistakes. If I make mistake, you come to me and say, Chiwe, you didn't do right. I will apologize. I promise you, I'll go down and I'll apologize. Nobody's bigger than me. Nobody's better than me. And I'm not better than anybody either. But we are all equal before God. We are all made in his image. Therefore, we should all treat people the way we want them to treat us. So let us keep loving people, doing what we know is right. Okay, it's not about you and your family. It's not about you and your children. It's about the love of God. When your child does something wrong, call your child and say what you did was wrong. But you cannot throw your child away either because you are meant to be taking responsible uh, responsibility for that child. So you need to correct the child and at the same time make the child to understand that this is not how to do things and show them a better way to do it. You know, in Africa, we are used to telling people, oh, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do this, go away. I said so, that's why. No, that attitude for me has changed. I don't do that anymore. I used to do it because I said so. No, I don't say so. I'll ask you to come, let's talk about it. Okay, this is how you feel. But as your child, this is your role and this is my role. Therefore, can we respect each other and come to the middle and do things the way it should be? And I will tell you the consequences based on what I know of what you, should, you shouldn't be doing. If you decide to do it, then be ready to live with the consequence because I am not going to go to prison on your behalf. So it's a responsibility. I have to push back to them. You understand? They're over 18. So that's cool. So for my friends, what I want to say to you today is this. Don't just come to the platform and start saying, oh, why is this happening? Well, try and understand where this information, this knowledge is coming from. Don't look at Pastor Sunday as one of the pastors. Oh, they're all the same. Some of those, you know, some of these people I know, they're all, um, they're all the same. Yes, they are the same. But please, do not take something out without finding out why it was there in the first place. Then you should be able to reflect Make your analysis and say, you know what, I think I'm going to do this. Because once you critically look into things, you'll find it easier to make a better decision, you know, or solve a problem. And for me, 
That is what I do. Everybody's speech is important. You know, everything that everybody say is important. But do I have to take all? No, I don't have to take all. So that is the time in my life I will say, I am not going to do this because it is not right. You know, based on what I know. But it's only what you know that you can actually give to other people. If you don't have it, you don't have it. So I believe that um, God has made it to be the way it is. And God put me in the same plane to get contact with this man called DSA to use him to touch me because my life is transformed. The way I think is different. The way I do things is different. In fact, some people say, ah, Chiu, is this you are saying I'm you? Even he himself is saying to me, ah, Chiu, you change. Is this you? I say, I'm you. But you know, I am more at peace with myself. I've come to accept anything that happens in my life today. No matter how ugly it looks, no matter how bad it looks, I say, Lord, I thank you because you're doing it. You're allowing it to happen for me to learn a lesson. And I'm going to use it to glorify you because I want to extract the information from that lesson and use it to change certain things in my life. I can't believe it, but I have changed. It's me. This but is me. How can people, so how can people become begin to do things, even though they are here, and change the lives of people in Nigeria? even though you are here. Okay. Just like I said, um, you see, there's a thing called trust, which most people are afraid to even talk about. But sometimes we have to take a very um, big risk in doing certain things. There must be somebody you can give an opportunity. We have people from your village or your streets or wherever you live. There must be people, you know, your family, friends, whoever you, you think you have. You can always ask them to find out people that requires help and you make contact with them. Take one person, just one person, say, you know what, I will be paying your school fees. Your school fees, that's enough to start. If you can do that, just do it. Because that one life that you are touching can become anything and anybody tomorrow. They might not remember you, yes. The man will remember you, but I tell you something. He who has given you the ability, the knowledge, and the strength to do those things will remember you. That is where I believe one pastor saying, when you do things like this, the windows of heaven will open unto you. It's not about sowing seed, because the seed you are sowing now is actually going to take somebody who is in need and solving that person's problem. You give that person a longer life because at least he or she will sleep. Will not be thinking. People think and get depressed. Nigeria is in a state. So anything we can do to help, that's what we should be doing. So you can do it. You used you as in the beginning of this message, you said you are paying your money tight to church. Of course I was. What about now? Are you is it what you, you are using to change? You are using it to I, change I'm the life. It, yes. Yes, that's what I'm doing. No, I use see. my money now to support anybody I think I'll serve. Like, um, I've not started it full time. Like, this is it. Because I'm still having some financial, you know, um, should I say constraint. But the little that I have, I use it to, you know, put on. I don't know. There was somebody, um, my sister told me sometime, who couldn't pay the house rent. I didn't pay the rent. But what I did was to support the person and i said to my sister let the person come and stay with you for a little while until the person finds his own place because that has been paid i didn't have money to support at the time but you know i had a place i said you go and stay there for now until the person finds a place so that's something you know pastor i've learned from you that everything doesn't you know it doesn't have to be money it doesn't have to be money like I tell you something I wanted to do today. Unfortunately, um, this program, the request for this program came up, so I, I forgot it. I had planned to go to one of the primary schools around there to go and talk to them and say if I can bring them some things, you know, just for the children. But when I was told that I might come on, I said, okay. I don't want to go too far and start running around, you know, and not to be available when I'm needed. And I really want to do this today. I can always do it another time. 
In fact, yesterday, I was just thinking, you know, maybe I should call some of these people around my street here, you know, some of these children that are here, and create a little, um, should I say, this summer period, create like a um, fun pack something, ask some of these families to cook something, you know, let them come to buy, we'll play with them, you know, just something to keep them busy. That was just what I was thinking in my head. There are so many different things we can do, you know, to make people happy. I, I was telling my sister, you can go and babysit for somebody who is in need of babysitter. Just stay with the child until the mother comes back. That's, that's it. You know, so there's so many ways we can do these things. It all depends on how comfortable people feel. But for me, it's no longer the comfort. It's about meeting the need. For me, it's no longer comfort. It's now the need. So whatever that I can do to meet a need, somebody who is in desperate situation, I will do it. I'm not going to ignore somebody because oh, well, it's not my sister, it's not my brother. If I hear it and I'm in the position to do it, why not? I'll do it. But even when you went to Nigeria, did you were you able to meet those widows and those poor people? Um, like I I didn't I didn't meet I didn't meet them, but I met like one of I would say a representative who who happens to be my husband's um, sister. She wasn't around when that thing happened. So she came to see me because I didn't stay long in the East. I had to go back to Lagos. She came to see me and she said to me, she went, I don't know how to start thanking you. You know, I came back and these widows called me and said, this is your brother's wife. We've never seen anybody in this village do anything like this for us before. And I want to thank you because what you did actually for my family is a good name, not just for you. I said, well, auntie, I really didn't do it to give you people any good name. I did it because those people were in need. And when I saw them, there were about eight of them. So I am planning again, by God's grace, this Christmas or even before then, depending on how things go, to do, you know, I want to make it like a yearly thing, if I can, for them, those people, you know, I want to do a yearly thing. And um, while she was talking to me, she also told me about um, one of them, their daughter couldn't go to school, had stopped going to school, secondary school, and the child is very bright. And um, I said to her to get me the details of the child, um, let my husband at least help me out there, talk to them and find out what she wants to do so that I can, you know, be of assistance. So what about the ones, I'm still waiting. What about the ones you helped in Lagos? Um, I didn't, no, I saw one of them. I saw one of them when I went to visit my sister. She came to see me, you know, thanked me also. And I said, well, auntie, it's, it's okay. It's not a big deal. Because my story, let me just say this. My story is this, you know, helping people is something that you never know when that same help will come to you. I'll tell you, you were talking about your story of how I went to Soviet Union. Yes. Let me just briefly say this. Maybe you, you will be shocked. You might not know about this, but let me tell you. It's a confession. I, I didn't go to Soviet Union because I was very intelligent. That wasn't the case. I went to Soviet Union because when I was in secondary school, in class three, I noticed a girl who was crying all the time. When I went to her, she wasn't my friend, but, you know, I said, what is wrong with you? Why are you always crying? And she said, oh, the seniors were punishing me. So by the time I got to the refectory, the food is finished and I don't have anything to eat and I'm hungry. I said, is that it? I said, okay. At the time, oh, God has a way of putting people in certain places for certain reason. At the time, being the only child or the only, whatever, my dad was working with Shell at the time, I think, moved to Bristol. He was, you know, financially comfortable. And um, my shopping used to come from Leventis or UT, UTC in Lagos. So I have the cupboard full of food. And I said, me, I like biscuits, cake, all this every. That's why I'm big, okay? <laughs> so I called her and I said to her, come. I took my provision, divided it into two, gave her. I said, keep it in your cupboard. Anytime you miss cold food and you don't have anything, eat this is my spare key. If you need more, go and help yourself. Just that, she became my friend. That, that's just it. She became my friend. Now, this lady, I didn't know at that time that this was happening. She was an orphan. And the brother was busy trying to train her and the other two or three brothers all on his own. So it was later, she said to me one day, 
my brother wants to meet you. I said, what for? She said to me, because I told my brother what you've been doing for me. And he was like, who is this doing all this? Are you sure it's not a man doing this thing for you? He said, no, please, I should come so that the brother doesn't think there is something else. I said, okay. I went. I traveled from Okigwe, where my school was, and I went to Wari. Went there the weekend, saw the man. He blessed me. He asked me, who is your dad? I said, my dad is nobody. Or just the same. They call him Sammy Sparkle. You know, we started laughing. I said, that's him. Nothing else. I said, okay. And my sister has told me what you've been doing and all this, blah, blah, blah. I said, yes. Um, is there any reason why you're doing it? I said, sir, I don't have to have a reason. I just saw somebody who was in need. And I helped out because I had more than enough. And that's it. He said, okay. And he said to me, you're going to go places. I said, well, thank you. I just took that as you know, a compliment. And that was how I left school. Now, when I left school, things had turned around for my dad. He didn't have money to send. His plan was for me to go to America to study. Things have changed. There was no money anymore. Even to pay house rent was an issue. To be honest with you, Dr. Sunday, the money that I used to pay for my ticket coming to Russia was borrowed. 800 naira. It was borrowed from two different people. That was how bad it was. So what did I do? I said to myself, okay, since this is the situation, I am going to see the end of it. You know what she did? She left. She had a scholarship and left. She did medicine in, in Soviet Union. The year she left, I lost contact. I didn't have any contact anymore. She now sent somebody to go and check if I'm still living where we were living. Then I started looking for you know schools to go to Yaba College. Of, I had admission Yaba College of Technology then. But you know what? It didn't happen. Then the brother sent the secretary with a letter to come and give to me. I wasn't at home. My father got the letter. When I came, my father was like, who is this man asking you to come to their office? I said, I wouldn't know unless I read and find out. And my mom said, why don't you open it and see who it is before you start? You know how parents, you know. <laughs> so what did I do? I asked my dad to read it out. He opened it already. So, oh, it's Mr. Halliday. They've not met, but my dad knows the family because of what has happened between me and the sister. Everybody in my home knows about this lady. So at the end of the day, that was what happened. She begged the brother to please assist me. It happens that his brother at the time was the person in charge of um, students abroad. Scholarship. And he was, Scholarship. yes. So Scholarship. Students yes. Abroad. yes. Yes, he was in charge, Mr. Holiday. So he said to me, I should bring my results and everything. And I brought it. He sent it off to um, Russian embassy and whatever. He said to me, at this time, go and check. If your name comes out, it means I've accepted you. And that was how I went to Russia. So you see, at the end of the day, it is not my hard work. It is not my father's. And I, I'm surprised the, the pastors and the prophecies did not see that one coming. That was how I traveled abroad. Pro pro prophecy don't see anything good now. It has to be something horrible to give you fear. Yes. So that was what happened. And um, that so is your, my it story. was your kindness. Yes. That... It is kindness. It is kindness. It will always pay. It will always pay. No matter what. And um, like I said, for now, <laughs> oh God, I'm going to go off my way, do whatever I have to do to make sure that anybody around me that requires attention will have it. So you are kind I, to I'm this so girl, good. but you never knew that God can use a girl that didn't even have provision. Yes. Yes. That is how, that is how God works. So things change. Your dad had lost his own job, and, but God yes. has placed his brother in a place where they could now... So the port. Yes. And you know the way it was competitive. You know, when the same year I came, you know how many people mm. were competing for scholarship? 300,000 people from Nigeria mm. writing to win federal government scholarship. 300,000. Yeah. And only 300, only three of, 300 of us were picked. So what that man mm. did for you, yeah, it is because of what you did for the sister. It's just a principle. Yeah. 
that love, nothing is superior to love. Yeah. Now, but this thing you did, you see, even this story you spoke, it is still about love. It's not about money. Yes, it's about okay. love. Okay. But and the thing that connected me to you is also about love. It's not about money. Yes. yes. So you see how God mm -hmm. has been using you to change people's lives. And we, I have Miriam here. Miriam is also writing, you know, you know, to confirm. So every, everything, well, not everything, but most of the thing that you have, God has used you in to bless and change people's lives, it's always connected to love and kindness. And it's always yes. connected to your heart and to who you are. So why don't you mm. now start, maybe uh, the way you are talking now, see how many people are coming and everybody, you know, listening to you. Why don't you start a live broadcast, maybe? Or maybe once in a while. Or maybe something to talk. Because either it's about this, de uh, is it the... De uh, the next, the, the next year or whatever, the, 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 next, the next year, year. The next year or whatever, anything that you have learned, all these stories, even all these and your experiences, one at a time, one at a time, one at a time, one at a time, it will change the world. Because yeah. this, this story we just even had today alone. See, people are writing, you go and read the comments later. People are writing and saying, you know, you have already been a blessing to them already, just by listening to them. Can you imagine how many people also, through your words and your heart and your examples like that, could also begin to, you know, many more people will be blessed. That is my challenge to you. Okay. You know, when I came to HMT, I, I made a comment, and um, that comment was family, work, and all these things are all set back. Yes. They're all set back to so many things. Like Uncle Sam. And I tell you something. Yes. I tell you something. At some point, because of my because of my health situation, I started thinking, how is it gonna be? Is it the end of it? Is that is that what it is? I can't function well, I can't do this. You know, it kind of tried to overwhelm me and I retracted from who I was or who I am. But um the more I listen to you, I realize that, you know what, even in this condition, you can still do things. For me, I think there are certain things that when they come my way, I see it as overwhelming, it's too much, and I, I, can't, I can't work with that. So what I do is take, take a step back, take my time, and say, okay, you know what, let me take this chunk. It's just like the, um, what's it called, the... the Oh, there was something you taught about how to eat the elephant, something yes, like that, yes, you know, yes. cutting it in chunks. Uh -huh. So I said, okay, let me start what I can handle that will not stress me. Because to be honest, if you want to do something, I am not going to do it because I want to impress people. No, I want to do it because this is what God has put in my heart to do. And if I'm going to do it, I will do it at a time that I can manage myself. That's right. I have to look at myself, yeah. what I can do. I'm not in competition with anybody and I'm not, I've never been and I will not be. Yeah. This yeah. is who I am. Yeah. So what you see is actually what you're going to get. Yeah. So I know I did try to start something, but there are other things around me that felt, you know what, it's not going to give me a chance. But I'm trying to work out a system, what I can do comfortably and still be achieving what I want to achieve. I think the goal is the most important thing. Now, it's not even how I did it. Because, Pastor Sunday, you might have your expectation of what you expect me to do. I'm, I might not work that way. Yeah. Because I'm not going to table. You know, you, you have developed certain things in your own way. You have confidence in doing certain things. There are certain things I'm not confident in doing. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm not a confident person, but I don't feel, oh, I'm, I'm not, you know, skilled enough to do this. Yeah. You don't understand. But then, that was why every time I talk in HMT, I say some people need somebody to hold their hands and say, yes, we can do it. They perform better that way. Some people, they don't need anybody to hold their hand. They're off the go. This is who they are. It all comes down to the same confidence, either the knowledge of what you have in your head or your exposure to things, your experience, or maybe your personality. Yeah. So yeah. all these things have a lot to do with what some of us do. So what some of us do, especially me. So I, I can talk for myself. You saw my two kids. 
I'm sure we compare both of them. They are two different people. <laughs> yeah, no? but, they, but they you have done people. a you have done a good job. You have done a good job with your children. That's another thing I wanted to tell you. You mm, know, you, thank they you. are very, very you could see that they are well, well, well taught. They have the right principles. Even though they have spoken mm -hmm. just for a few minutes, but you could tell that they have the right mm -hmm. foundation. You've done a very, very good job. Before we go, mm -hmm. what would you like to recommend to people, maybe out of the series or out of the books, to maybe what series to listen to or what book to read or maybe to go to HMC? What would you like to recommend to people in in for them to grow? Well, um, for me, it depends also on individuals and um, what their learning style and what they are happy or comfortable, you know, doing. Because, um, like I said, when I sit down and I'm listening to you, I do better than actually reading a book. Okay. That's me. But then, if somebody can read the book, there are those who can read they can go for the book, they can read. Those who want to listen can go on the blog and listen. For me, I do better listening. Okay. That's me. And um, like I said, there was a time somebody asked me what series. I was going to the series looking at everything. I wanted to hear everything, everything, but it doesn't work that way. <laughs> because you end up missing certain things. Not until you now advise and say, no, take one series at a time. Follow it, you know. <laughs> Follow it step by step. Then you will understand and you know put the puzzle together and make sense of it. But if you go today, oh, it's a bad money. Let me go to um, what's it called? Um, what's it called? Financial, financial series. And you won't follow it. Maybe you hear one thing there. You won't understand the principle how it got to that point. You went to the next one. <laughs> You'll be all over the place. Very chaotic. And you can listen for 10 years, you won't get anything out of it because it, it, it's been done systematically. And when you follow it systematically, you are likely to understand more. And you see, some people also, like when they are reading or listening, they are writing, they are making notes. My daughter does that. But I can't be making notes. I will miss out on things. I need to pay attention. I need to listen carefully before I can make up. I can go back second time after reading it the first time or, or listening the first time. The second time I can now start making notes. Then I've planned in my head what I want to achieve, what I want. There are things I had. I want to go back to it and understand how it works. So, like I said, for some people, you can please go to the blog, pick up whatever it is. And I also believe that people listen to what at the time or, or, of reading or listening is the problem. If you have a crisis, you want to go to crisis. If you're having problem trying to bring up your children, you want to go to the children, you know, to, to, to the service regarding children. And you think you're having problem with your marriage and everything, whatever, you know, it depends on what you have need for at the time. You can finish with one and then proceed to the next one. For me, that is how I do it. Those who read books, for me, what I've done now, because to be honest, Having books at home is good, but um, I might end up not reading it at all because if I hold on to this book, I'll sleep and the book will just fall off. So what I do is, you know, download it in my Kindle. Like when I was going to, I went to the airport last week, Saturday, to be honest with you, that was where I started. I can't remember which one I started. And I, I think that was um, this lady's book, Albertina. Argentina. Yes. I started that book. I only have one or two pages left because I had my phone with me. You know, everybody there, I don't know them and I don't care to know. I just concentrated on what I'm doing. So that is a condition for me to read. So for me, having it in my Kindle or, you know, my phone, whatever, is, is best for me. For people who like book, let them go for the book. But also, I like to listen when a program is going on. If I have opportunity, I want to listen because that is when I will get it. That is when I will get it. Because if there is anything I think I want to ask a question, I can ask immediately and get some answers as well. So that's how it works for me. But books, blog, listening, YouTube, or reading, anyhow, whatever that pleases anybody that makes you comfortable, just identify what works for you and go for it. That For me, that's it. You know what you have done today? It's no, like, sir. It's like you have uh, laid, you have uh, laid a very big table. 
before, before the whole world. Mm. And it's, it's funny that it's not a physical table. But you have fed the world today. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for having me. And thank you, everyone. I mean, I'm sure some of us will hook up much later because um, there are so many stories to be told. But for now, I'll leave it at that. I thank think, you, sir. I think you had about 5,000 people watching you today. So congratulations. Wow. wow. And that's the it. Empress is on. The Empress <laughs> is on. <laughs> So, oh my God! Thank, thank you, you everyone. Go, your daughters, thank you everyone. Your daughters are waiting for you. Go and celebrate. And in the next oh, two, forty minutes, we will come back to have a live broadcast again about the prosperity mm -hmm. gospel. Have a wonderful evening, my dear. Thank you very much. <laughs> Love you too. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. <laughs> Happy birthday. Bless you. Yeah. yeah.